Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. And we are your church. We need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first. We hunger and song this morning. Jump in when you feel comfortable. When night has fallen, when fear is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, you're enough for me, yeah, I've decided I'm not giving up, oh, no. you won't give up on me, you won't give up on me. Repeating promises to me. Huh. Now there's no stopping what you have started until it is complete. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me.
Come on, church. You're enough for me. I've decided I'm not giving up. Because you won't give up on me. You won't give up on me. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. I feel it breaking out like an echo. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. Holding on and it won't let go. I feel it breaking out like it let go. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. I feel it breaking out like it let go. Let go in my
can go ahead and have a seat. Last week, we talked about this verse from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, and it says, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and soul and strength. And we talked about what it would look like for us to go into this new year really loving God like that with every fiber of our being. But there's a couple verses right after that that I think are important for us to take a look at as well. And so Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 and 7 say this. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. And in this passage, you can see that we have this charge to keep our love for God in front of us, to be talking about it, to be talking about the activity of God in our lives, and then to pass our faith along to the next generation. And that's for those of us in this room that are parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, older siblings. Even if we are just a part of this church family, we have a responsibility to pass our faith to the next generation. So how does that happen? I think there's some clues in those verses that we just read. We have this charge to, to talk about our faith when we're sitting around the dinner table or when we're on a walk with a neighbor or when we're putting our kids to bed, we have an opportunity just in our regular conversation to share what God is doing in our life and what our relationship with him is like. And when you do that enough, when you start to talk about God just in your regular conversations, eventually you'll probably get a question that's, what is it that you really believe? What, what do you believe about God and Jesus? And I think some of us kind of stumble through that answer when we get asked a question like that. But at the very least, we can point people to scripture. We can say, uh, you can read about the life of Jesus in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, these are people who were eyewitnesses of Jesus and tell what it was like to do life with him and who he was. But up until a couple hundred years ago, even in the early 1800s, most people couldn't read. At that time, nine out of 10 people were illiterate. And so the way faith got passed along was really person to person, orally, telling the stories of faith. But if you've ever played the game of telephone in a room, you know how unreliable it can be to pass along a single sentence as a message around a room, let alone to pass along all the important tenets of our faith. And so a couple hundred years after Jesus, an apostle's creed came to be. And this word creed means I believe. And this was a group of statements that summed up the core beliefs of what it meant to follow Jesus. And uh, these statements, they, they summed up the heart of our faith. And whether you are new to faith and aren't sure what Christianity is about, the creed is a good place to start. And if you've been following Jesus for a little while and still maybe stumble through, how do I explain my faith? The creed is also a good place to start. It talks about the key parts of our faith, about who God is, that he is the creator, that he sent his son Jesus, who lived a perfect life and then died a death on a cross that you and I deserved, but he didn't stay dead. He rose again, and because of him, we can have eternal life. The creed talks about the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit working in and through us and through the church. And so the, this creed has come to be, and again, it sums up the core of our faith. And like any group of people, Christians often find it hard to agree on things. And yet this creed has stood the test of time. It stood for generations. A lot of times, we as Christians, we have a hard time agreeing on what the best worship music is and what volume it should be played at. We disagree about things like how we should discipline our kids or, or whether the earth was created in six literal days or something else. But there's power in the fact that this creed has been recited for generations and in different cultures and countries for years. In fact, there are churches this morning that will be reciting this creed all across the world. And so in just a few minutes, we're going to say this creed together that sums up the core of our faith. But before we do, a couple things I want to share with you. First, if you grew up in a church reciting the creed, uh, some of the lines might look a little bit different, but the essentials of it are the same. 
And then there's one line kind of towards the end of the creed that says, we believe in one holy Catholic church. And that word Catholic doesn't refer to the Roman Catholic Church. It's not referring to a system of churches governed by the Pope. This word Catholic is the lowercase c word, lowercase Catholic. And that means the universal church, the whole church, the general church. And this line says that we believe in the holy Catholic Church. It means that we believe that God has created the institution of the church to reach the world. And that's what we're declaring together. And so we're going to read these words together. And as we do... I just ask that you let them soak into you. These are the core beliefs of the Christian faith. So will you stand with me? And let's read these words together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we can read these words, we can recite them, we can even memorize them, but there's something about song, about music that cements these ideas into our minds. Even last night, I was at a bookstore, and uh, there was a song that came on that I hadn't heard for decades, and immediately I knew the words of the song. And so in a minute, we're going to sing this song that we've sung a couple of times here before. It's this song called King of Kings. And while the words aren't exactly the Apostles' Creed that we just read, uh, it's a creed type of song because it walks us through all of those key parts of who God is and who his son Jesus is, that Jesus came for our salvation and that he gave us the Holy Spirit who gives birth to our church and works in and through all of us and through his church. And so this song declares all of those key things that we would consider part of our creed. Now, the group that wrote this song, they're called Hillsong Worship, and uh, they've written lots of music. And a couple weeks ago, they were invited to the Today Show to sing a song. And they've written catchier songs, songs with fewer words, but for some reason, they picked this song, King of Kings. And I think it's because when they had an opportunity to share with the world a message, they wanted to share the heart of their faith. And so this morning, that's the song we're going to sing, King of Kings, and we're going to sing out and declare the core truths of our faith. So let's sing King of Kings together now. Salvation, Jesus. 
your buried body begin to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim then came the morning came the morning that sealed the promise Father, we stand in that truth this morning, that you, Father, are our living hope and our saving grace. May our hearts, Father, be tuned to your spirit. May we walk in the promises, Father, that you promise for us. God, it's an honor to worship you and to celebrate your goodness, Father. And it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen, church. Well, it's been an honor to sing with you this morning. Before you have a seat, why don't you say hello to someone next to you and then take a seat. Well, good morning, church family. Thanks for coming out on this cold January morning. But if we can't handle this, right? I mean, what are we even doing? We should all move to Florida. Who's with me? Let's go. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> it's not much better. Is that what you said? <laughs> Costa Rica? Is that? Oh, oh. We have, I guess we're taking suggestions now of where we're all going to move. Fantastic. Well, at this time, I'll invite our service host forward to collect today's offering. And uh, I just want to tell you in advance, thank you so much. Many of you give uh, of your resources each and every week, whether it's in this room or online. But I know many of you also give with your talents and your time to help support this church and keep ministry moving forward right here at Willow South Lake. And I'm so thankful for you. And while they are uh, collecting today's offering, I want to make sure that you are aware of all the things that are happening around our church, or at least some of the things that are happening, so that you can better get involved in what's happening in the ministry here. Now, uh, in just a few weeks, our high school students will be going away to a weekend retreat called BLAST. And retreats for our students are a pivotal time in their faith. It's an opportunity for them to go deeper with their small groups and community, but also go deeper in their worship and in their connection to God. And uh, we want for every student in this area to have the opportunity to go to camp. And so if you'd like to find out more information or if you need to get your student registered still, you can go to studentimpactcamp.com to get them registered. You can also find that on our app and on our website. Now, 
Next week, or two, week, two weekends from now, actually, on the 25th, we are going to be partnering with one of our local uh, compassion partners called Love, Inc. Love, Inc. helps under-resourced families right here in Lake County. And we will be partnering with them at their warehouse, getting some things set up, and then also some will get to go and to deliver some items to some families that are really in need. And so that's going to be happening on the 25th. If you'd like to find out more information about serving, or if you would like to register for that serve event, contact WSLServe at Willow, or willowcreek.org, and they will help you get all set up there. And it's going to be a fantastic time serving some of the families right here in our community. Now, after that, on the very next day, on the 26th, we will be continuing our Jesus in workshop series with Jesus in our questions. And all of us have questions about faith. All of us have questions about scripture and God. And this is an opportunity for you to come and to ask those questions. It doesn't matter if you've been a Christian for just a little while or exploring faith still. Or maybe you've been a Christian for a long time and you're like, I should know the answer to this question, but I'm too embarrassed to ask now. That's okay. Come with your questions. We're going to open it up. We're going to have some great discussion. Dr. Jules Martinez from Trinity International University will be with us. And he said he's going to answer all of your questions, no matter how hard it is. Just kidding. We'll see how it goes. But it's going to be a great time. A light lunch will be provided. Again, more information is on our app and website. Now, today, we want to continue, or we want to start a brand new series called All the Things. And this is going to be a series that is going to walk us through the book of Psalms. We find that right there in the middle of the Bible. And God often uses the Psalms in very powerful ways to encourage and challenge us. And today will be no different as we get to hear from Albert Tate, who is the pastor of Fellowship Monrovia from Monrovia, California. But he has a fantastic, fantastic and challenging message for us today. So now we will join in with our South Barrington congregation and Pastor Tate. I am so thankful to be here. I am uh, fighting a cold, so I'm going to sound a little nasally. But... Uh, I believe the Lord can speak through congestion. Amen? Amen. Amen. Psalm 23 is where you'll find me today. Psalm 23. As we continue in the series, today we're going to talk about all the fears. Uh, all the fears. Psalm 23. Hear these words of our Father. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me, in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much. God, I thank you for this great church. Thank you for the work that you're doing here in this church. Uh, Father, I pray that as we've gathered together that you would speak, O oh Lord, like only you can. Tune our ear to your voice so that we might hear you ever so clearly. Turn our hearts toward you so that we might experience the fullness of all that you have for us. God, it's to that end that I ask that you stand in my body, think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords those things you would have us say, know, and do. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, you are my strength. You are my redeemer. Get glory in this place. In Jesus' name. Every heart said amen. amen. In order to get started, all I really need are the first three words of this passage. The first three words are so loaded and so filled that uh, one, one preacher said, you can get on the plane at JFK and go all the way to LAX and still not make it past the first three words because they are so packed with theological potency. The first three words of this psalm, that's, 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 that's all I need. Give me the first three words. What are they? The Lord is. 
He is. He, he's, he's, he's all that you'll ever need, all that you could ever desire, all that you could ever want, the Lord is. He, he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the fir first and the last. He is. He, he is. One of the biggest implications is if the Lord is, that means you ain't. <laughs> if he is, that means you ain't. It's important for you to realize that he is. He is all that we could ever need I'm ready for the next word now. The Lord is my. It's personal. All that he is, he is all that within me. All that he is by nature, I am by grace. Ooh, that was good. Let me say that again. <laughs> all that he is by nature, I am by grace. By nature, he's, he's loving. I am loving by grace. By nature, he is peace. He is shalom. I get to experience peace by grace. He is filled with joy by nature. And by grace, I get to be filled with joy. The Lord is my. He is connected. It is personal. He's not some God out in the cosmos somewhere. No, the Lord is my. I have a personal connection with him. Watch this. I'm ready for the next word now. What's the next word? Shepherd. He puts a dynamic to the relationship. He gives a description to the relationship. There, there, there's a way there's, this relationship works. There's a, there's a way it works. Every relationship has a dynamic. Me and my wife, our relationship has a dynamic. She tells me what to do, I do it. That's the dynamic in our relationship. Every relationship has a dynamic. Shepherd, 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 shepherd. Uh, the shepherd provides for the sheep, protects the sheep anticipates the needs for the sheep. That's what the shepherd does. Now, if the Lord is the shepherd, that means we're the sheep. And a quick Google search of sheep will, will show that sheep ain't the brightest bulbs in the pack. What is Jesus saying about us? I think he's saying you need to realize that the Lord is. You ain't. Trust him and follow him. Trust him and follow him. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. Recognize that you desperately need the shepherd. Now, watch this. I, I, I grew up on the King James Version, so you have the, excuse me, I, 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 I pull back. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore I shall not want. It doesn't mean that you don't have desires anymore. No, it's that because the Lord is, and all that he is, he is my he is my shepherd. He's going to take care of me. What that means is I shall not want anything outside of the shepherd's provision. In other words, if the shepherd ain't providing it, then I ain't wanting it because I don't want anything that ain't coming from the shepherd. Why? Because he is all that I could ever need or desire or want. So I guess the big thing you got to get before you can get anything else, you got to recognize that the Lord is. And because he is, you don't want or desire anything outside of what the Lord, your shepherd, is providing. I don't want it. If it ain't coming from the shepherd in 2020, I don't want it. I want what God wants for me. I don't even want what I want for me. I want what the shepherd wants for me. So if the shepherd ain't providing it, then I ain't wanting it. The Lord is my shepherd. And because of who he is, I shall not want. Then, here we go, he says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Why he got to make me lie down? Because he loves us too much to allow us to stand in our own power. So even if he has to make us lie down, he'll make us lie down. This is where you got to be willing to surrender. Everybody say surrender. This is where you got to be willing to let it go. Everybody say let it go. You got to recognize that if he's the shepherd and if the Lord is, 
And if he's who, who he, if, if you're willing to allow him to be who he was created to be in your life, you got to surrender to him. You can't be a rogue sheep. Um, there's a story as I was studying this. There's a story of a shepherd when he has a rogue sheep, a sheep that goes away from the flock. It's very dangerous because the wolves desire to get the sheep when they wander off. So it has been said that if there's a sheep that keeps wandering off, a good shepherd lovingly, watch this, will break his leg, will break the sheep's leg. And then with a broken leg, carry the sheep on his shoulders to remind the sheep that the shepherd cares for him and wants to lead him and nurse him back to health so that he won't wander away and be killed by the wolves. Somebody say, he makes me lie down. He, he forces us to a place of trust and surrender because he loves us too much to leave us standing in our own power. There's a story of a pastor, a friend, who was traveling in the Middle East, and they, they went riding on camels, and, um, and one of the camels had all the luggage on it, and then the other camels carried the people. When they got to where they were going, the camel carrying the luggage, you know, it's pretty high. They couldn't get the stuff off of the camel unless the camel bit down on his knees. But the camel had been standing in his power and in his strength for so long, he, could, he wouldn't bend his knees. He wouldn't go down. So they literally had to get twigs and whack and whack behind his knees. And after whacking and whacking, eventually the camel slowly Finally went down on his knees. And it wasn't until he went down on his knees they could roll the burden away from his back. Y'all get it early. I won't have to preach as long. <laughs> Sometimes God's got to bring you down on your knees so he can get the burden off of your back. Some of you carrying burdens into 2020 already. And he's saying... You weren't made to carry that burden. That burden should be rolled off of your back. But you're standing in your own power. So he says, I'll make you lie down. But watch this. He says, I'm going to make you lie down in green pastures. Not a desert, not a dry place, but a place of sustenance. A place of provision. He says, I'll make you lie down in green pastures, in a place where I will provide for you. I guess one of the first lessons I want you to begin to think about as we think about 2020 in the first Sunday of the year, what are the things you need to let go of? What are the things that you need to let go of and don't need to take into 2020? What are the things that you need to surrender? Recognize that the Lord is. Recognize that you ain't. And say, God, this year, I'm not going to hold on to these burdens. I'm not going to stand in my own power, in my own strength. I'm going to humble myself, and I'm going to lie down in green pastures. Simply put, Jesus, you take the wheel. I'm going to let you drive. It's something about letting Jesus drive that impacts how you live. It impacts your position. It doesn't just change Jesus' position in your life, but it impacts your position as well. There's a story of a pope many years ago. He was going to speak at the UN in New York, um, but because of weather conditions, his flight got redirected to Newark, New Jersey. So he landed in Newark, New Jersey, and uh, got in a limousine, but now had to try to make it to New York in time. 
he was going to be late for a speech. The Pope was growing frustrated. You know, it takes a lot to get the Pope frustrated. Uh, because the driver was just driving slow. He just wasn't driving aggressively at all. Eventually, the Pope said something. He said, sir, could you please speed up? Um, and then the driver said, your holiness, unfortunately, I've got a lot of, I got a lot of speeding tickets. And if I get another ticket, they're going to revoke my license and I'm going to lose my job. So then the Pope makes a suggestion that no one saw coming. The Pope says, let me drive. <laughs> so he says, okay. So the Pope is driving. And y'all, he started driving like he was in NASCAR or something. Like he just drive. He's speeding. He going fast. And he gets into New York. As soon as he gets into New York, police officer pulls him over. So the Pope pulls over, uh, police officer, him and his partner, the ticket writing uh, cop gets out, his partner stays in the car. He walks up to the car and just turns around and gets back in his car. <laughs> the guy, his partner says, man, you're not gonna give that guy a ticket? He's like, no, he, he too important. I'm, I'm not giving him no ticket. He says, what you mean he's too important? Who it? Was, was it the mayor? He's like, no, oh, he's more important than the mayor. Who's more important than the mayor? What? Was it the governor? He's like, no, oh, he's more important than the governor. He's like, well, it couldn't have been the president. The president ain't here. He says, no, this, this guy's more important than the president. He said, who in the world is more important than the president? He says, I don't know, but whoever this guy was, he had the Pope driving him. <laughs> this guy had the Pope driving him. <laughs> I, I guess what I want you to understand is when you let Jesus drive, it changes your position. It changes who you are. It changes who you are. He, um, I, can hear, I can hear some of you, though. You're saying, Albert, I can't be resting all this time. I got to go to work tomorrow. I, gotta, I, gotta, I got stuff to do. I can't just be resting. But you see the movement in the passage. It's, it's, he's not just sitting still. He says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Watch this. He's leading me beside quiet waters. He's restoring my soul. You can't get your soul restored until you let go. Your, the restoring and the refreshing of your soul happens through your surrender of your soul. Um, and then watch this. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. He, 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 he's going to move you. He's going to put you in the right place at the right time for his namesake. For his glory, he's going to put you at the right job at the right time. For his glory, he's going to put you in the right situation, the right relationship at the right time for his glory. In other words, don't worry about what's coming. He's going to put you in the right place at the right time. You're not going to miss anything because he's sovereign. He's a good God. He's a good father. He's going to provide for you. He's going to take care of you. He says, so... I put you in the right place at the right time, and then it turns. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Wait a minute. How did we get in the valley of the shadow of death? We were just sitting in the grass drinking distilled water, and now all of a sudden we're in the valley of death, Jesus? Well, I guess what we need to understand is sometimes even following Jesus, you'll end up in dark places. Twenty twenty will be a great year. It'll be a great decade. But can I tell you, we will still have dark days. We'll still have challenging times. Don't you think for one second that following Jesus every day is gonna be sunny? No, we will have dark days. But I'm telling you, don't allow the fear 
of those dark days to overwhelm you. Don't allow all the fears to bring you to a place to where you don't believe, you don't trust, or you don't go. Even though we walk through dark days, David says, I will not fear. Why? Because I ain't walking through dark days by myself. God is walking with me. I am not alone. Reminds me of a story. Um, when, I was in, uh, when I was in high school, I went to this dance. Um, and at this dance, I, um, I still remember what I had on. I had on this orange Carl Kanai jean outfit. Uh, it looks as good as it sounds. Um, <laughs> I just want you to know that. Um, and I remember dancing and getting my groove on. I had skills. I had skills. I actually, I actually still have skills. Um, but I'm, I'm dancing and stuff like that. And I remember this guy, he was just upset and just pointing and cussing and stuff. And I was like, oh, man, he's about to fight somebody. So, you know, at a junior high fight, you know what happens. You, uh, they start making a circle, right? So I remember starting to get in the circle because to see the fight in the circle, <laughs> the circle kept getting around me. Well, come to find out, he wanted to fight me. Um, but I had some thuggish, ruggish cousins, man. I had some thuggish, ruggish. So they came in. It, it was kind of like this. Uh, let me see. I, I need some help. Sorry, could you just come here. Help me out. Come here. here. Uh, uh, my, my man right here, would you come, here, come up here. Help me out. Come on, come on, come on. Come up the steps over here. My man right here. Let me get one more. My, my man right here. Yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all, come up. Come on, come on, come on. All right. So I need, you're excited to be up here, I can tell. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I need, I need, I need y'all, you to be, y'all to, y'all are my, my thuggish cousins. Can y'all look, can y'all look hard? Can y'all look thuggish? What's your thuggish look? Let me see your thug look. Oh, that's good. That's okay, okay. That's good. That's good, that's good. All right, and you're going to be the angry dude, so you go over there. You're the angry dude that's coming at me and cussing and stuff. So, so, so just start cussing real loud. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, was just, I just wanted to see what kind of Christian he was. I just, I just, I was like, he had to think about it, though. He was like, huh, what, should I, what word should I use? This. Okay, okay, so guys, so y'all, y'all are behind me. Um, and you come up, but listen, don't let him get close. When he gets up to me, y'all jump in front of me, okay? All right? All right, so you coming, you mad, you angry, you coming, and then they come. <laughs> you obviously didn't do a, get in a lot of fights when you was kids. <laughs> like, he was like, <laughs> what? what was that? All right, okay, okay. So you come, y'all come in front of me. You come, you come, come on, come on. There you go, there you go. All right, all right. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, y'all got to get him. Okay. All right, so y'all standing in front of me. They come in front of me. And when my cousins come, he changes his mind, and he no longer wants to engage with me because he sees my cousins, all right? So then he changes his mind. He goes, you can, you can go on stage now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. He goes, all right? But yo, check this out. For the rest of the night, I'm traumatized. Guess where I am for the rest of the night? I'm with my cousins. If they go to the left, we all going to the left. We, when we go to the right, we all going to the right. They go to the bathroom, we all going to the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? Because yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. Thou art with me. And what David is trying to get us to understand is, yes, there will be hard times. Yes, there will be dark days. Yes, there will be challenging times. But you don't have to worry and you don't have to fear because you've got a God that will never leave you nor forsake you. You've got a God that will be there every step of the way. You've got a God that says, thou art with me and he'll never leave you or forsake you. You've got a God who's going to be right there every step of the way. Amen? Amen. Thank you, guys. I, I guess 
what I want you to understand is as you get ready for another year, there are two things you got to do. You got to leave some things behind. You got to let some things go. And you got to trust God, knowing that even when the dark times come, you can walk into the unknown because you know that God is with you. It's, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like this. I, I, I had this vision, and, and I, I think I can pull it off. I think I can pull it off. It's, it's, it's a, a frozen anointing is what I want you to have. A frozen anointing. Y'all know the movie Frozen? If, if you don't know it, let, let, me, let me set the scene. Let me set the scene. Uh, for Ty, uh, come out. Come, come out. Help me out here. Uh, uh, frozen, let me, get some, let me get some ice on the ground. Uh, let me get some stuff coming off. Frozen. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I love Willow. You can do all kinds of stuff at Willow Creek. Any, any other? Elsa and Anna, what she realizes is that she never walk into the full power and her full potential. She'd never fully accomplish what she needs to accomplish if she doesn't do this one thing. And this one thing, she... She, she captures it melodically, this theological truth that is so significant that honestly drove parents crazy all across the world. They were tired of hearing it, tired of listening to it, because every child was singing it. But in lies a theological truth that I want to remind you of. She simply said these words. Let it go, let it go. Don't hold it back anymore. Let it go, let it go. Turn away and slam the door. I don't care what they're going to say. Let the storm rage on. The cold never bothered me. Oh, that's so good. I'm so dramatic. Um, so I guess what I want you to see is that you've got to let it go. And then they came out with Frozen 2. And in Frozen 2, it was as if they knew what I wanted to preach about this weekend. It was as if they knew exactly what I wanted to say. Because the truth is, you have to let it go so that you might go into the unknown. Into the unknown. Into the unknown. Into the unknown. You've got to let it go so that you might go into the unknown. And going into the unknown is okay if you're going into the unknown with the one who is known by all. So let it go. Give Jesus the will. Trust him. And know that this year, he's going to take you into the unknown. He's going to take you places that you would never sign up for, places that you would never uh, put on your schedule. But don't you be afraid, because you'll never go into the unknown alone. You'll go with the one who is known by all for his glory. Amen. Amen. Will you stand with me as we close and pray? Yeah, God, as we walk into another year, we don't know what comes before us. But God, we know that you know. And even what's unknown to us is known to you. 
And no matter what we walk into this year, God, you know it, and you go with us. You go before us, you go behind us, you go beside us. God, help us to sense that you are with us. And whatever valley of shadow of death that we walk through this year, God, help us to never forget that you don't leave us or forsake us. You are a God that stays near. And so as we go out into our weeks, God, I pray that we would hold on to that, that you're with us and that we can walk in confidence into whatever lies in the unknown because we have the assurance of your presence with us. And so we hold on to that. We love you. We give you glory. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. If there's anything that we can pray for you about, we'd love to do that. Our prayer team's right over here to the side. Have a great week, everyone. Blessings.